Peripheral neuropathy is, is a frustrating, painful, sometimes disabling condition that affects millions of people across the world. Now, if you're one of those people, I promise you, you need to watch this video until the very end because it's going to help you if there is a chance to slow down the progression of your neuropathy, to actually stop the progression, to reverse the progression, or even to completely reverse your neuropathy the answer is contained in this video. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical experience, and this video is going to help you with your peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy is so pervasive, I guarantee you uh, several of your friends and family members already suffer from it. So please consider sharing this video on your social media, on your Twitter, your Instagram, your Facebook, because watching this video might help someone understand the root causes of peripheral neuropathy. And with that knowledge, they can then begin to slow down the progression, to reverse it, or even to cure it. So first, let's get out of the way things that are definitely not going to help, okay? Because people spend money every day on products that are promoted to help peripheral neuropathy. And I'm gonna give you the short list of stuff. You can save your money. They're a waste of money. You don't need to buy them ever because they don't uh, even address the root cause of the neuropathy, they're gonna waste your money and they're not gonna fix anything. Uh, anything that you rub on externally, so if you have peripheral neuropathy in your feet, toes, legs, and someone's selling a cream, a salve, a lotion, a balm that you rub on your skin and this somehow is supposed to help the peripheral neuropathy, that's foolishness, that's a waste of money, that's never gonna help. I've actually seen uh, lauded doctors and, and experts out there say that you should decrease your salt intake or you should decrease your saturated fat intake. Not only is there no research to back this up, but it actually against, it goes against the actual uh, neurological physiology in the human body. Your nerves need salt and they are, they're made of fat. So these two recommendations are foolishness. Some people say, oh, taking uh, this certain multivitamin or this certain vitamin complex is going to cure your neuropathy. Never does that work. It might help a tiny bit if you have a vitamin or mineral deficiency, but if you don't have one of those deficiencies, that's not gonna help at all. You'll see uh, nerve support formulas out there that come in capsules and pills and maybe even shakes and powders. This is another complete and utter waste of money. You don't need any of these things that I talk about above. They, they are not going to help your peripheral neuropathy at all. There are a few prescription medications that will help the symptoms of peripheral neuropathy, the burning, the itching, the aching, the pain, the numbness, but they in no way address the root cause and they, each one of these has a long list not of possible side effects, but of probable side effects. You're gonna have side effects if you take one of these medications. They include Lyrica, Neurontin, Amitriptyline, and then Tegretol. Some of these are medications, most of these are medications for either seizure disorders or for depression uh, or mood disorders. And so they will knock the edge off of your symptoms, but in no way will they cure, reverse, or slow down the progression of your neuropathy. Now let's go through the list of things that are known to cause peripheral neuropathy. And I'm gonna start first with the, the, the least likely, okay? These are the one in a thousand or one in a hundred things that might be causing some of your neuropathy or in the very rare individual might be causing the, the majority of the neuropathy, but these are the very rarest of causes, okay? And I'm not saying all these things are super rare, I'm just saying they're probably not what's causing your peripheral neuropathy. They include alcoholism, if you drink alcohol for too many years, uh, amyloidosis, if you're taking chemotherapy, that can lead to neuropathy. If you have toxic levels of heavy metals, that can lead to neuropathy, porphyrias, dysautomatonia, uh, a B12 deficiency absolutely can cause a peripheral neuropathy. Uh, idiopathic polyneuropathies, and you may know from my other videos on this channel that idiopathic means we don't know what the hell's causing it but at least they can put a diagnosis on it. Uh, perineoplastic syndrome, so if you have cancer, a specific location in your body, that can lead to uh, some peripheral neuropathies. Lyme disease is a rare but known cause of peripheral neuropathies, sarcoidosis, and then small vessel vasculitis. Any of these things can lead to 
peripheral neuropathy. Now let's talk about the most common causes. And these are the ones you want to focus on because probably 90% of peripheral neuropathy in the world is caused by one of these things. Okay. And they really boil down to, to, to two different things, which I'll get into after I name this list. So diabetes, absolutely a huge cause of neuropathy and uh, hyperglycemia. So, and then prediabetes. So years before you develop type 2 diabetes, when you're in the very earliest stages of prediabetes, you can be developing neuropathy. And in fact, that's how many people are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. They go to the doctor and say, Doc, my, my feet are burning and I don't know why. So that can absolutely cause it. Chronic hyperinsulinemia, which is a part of prediabetes and also a part of the next one, which is metabolic syndrome chronic inappropriate inflammation. So just chronic inflammation caused by either your diet or something else entering your system that leads to chronic inappropriate inflammation, that inflammation can attack your small nerve endings in your feet, toes, legs, hands, and arms, and other parts of your body. Autoimmune conditions. And so if your immune system is strong but confused about where the boundary between you and not you begins, then your immune system can actually start to attack your nerve endings. Uh, so the, the hyperglycemia that comes from type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, prediabetes, and then hyperinsulinemia that, that comes years before even prediabetes starts, the hyperglycemia is the problem because this chronically high blood sugar or, or multiple spikes of high blood sugar every, every time you eat an inappropriate meal for you actually glycates the proteins on the myelin sheath of the little nerves out in your periphery. And the longer a nerve is, the more likely it is to be affected. And so when you glycate your myelin sheath, then your immune system comes along, your macrophages, and they start to say, hey, this doesn't look right. There shouldn't be a, a glycated protein right here. And so they start to uh, phagocytize that or engulf it and actually destroy your nerve ending. And so you've got the perfect storm of hyperglycemia leading to glycation. And then your immune system, which is confused because there's a weird glycation on a protein that shouldn't be there, your immune system actually starts to attack that. Again, with chronic inappropriate inflammation, inflammation, that's the second big arm of this, you actually will start to have inflammation around the arteries because, and your immune system is confused by all this inflammation everywhere all the time every day. So it starts to attack parts of you that it shouldn't. And in some people, this manifests as Hashimoto's thyroiditis. and some people, this manifests as lupus or Sjogren's or all the other autoimmune conditions, type 1 diabetes with the beta cells in the pancreas. But in some people, your immune system starts to attack your small nerves out in the periphery of your body, in your legs and in your arms. And that destroys the cell. And then there, and so you may have heard of phantom limb pain in the past. So if someone gets an arm or a leg cut off in a trauma or cut off because they had severe uncontrolled diabetes, they can actually have pain, phantom pain out in that foot that's no longer there. And so we know from this example that nerve pain can often be from the absence of a signal because your nerves in your smallest toe to your biggest toe to your leg, they're always communicating back and forth with your brain, basically sending the okay signal back and forth. And so if your brain is not getting an okay signal from your toe because either hyperglycemia or chronic inappropriate inflammation in the immune response has destroyed that nerve at some point, your body manifests that as pain. Even though there's nothing technically wrong with an amputated foot, the foot is not can't be giving you pain, it no longer exists, you're still getting a pain signal. And all this works together to lead to peripheral neuropathy. Now let's talk about the testing that you need. And so 90% of the testing you need is gonna be right up top in this list. And then I'm gonna talk about the, the less common and the more esoteric causes. So you, you, right off the bat, you need a hemoglobin A1C, you need a C peptide. You need both of these checked immediately to see what your glycemic situation is, right? To see what your prediabetes, your hyperglycemia, your type two diabetes, 
where are you at? And then you can start to reverse that. You need a complete metabolic panel. You need a urinalysis. You need a CBC with differential. You need a SED rate and a CRP. You need a vitamin B12 level check because that's one of the things that can lead to either peripheral neuropathy or worsening of your peripheral neuropathy caused by some other cause. You need a complete thyroid panel. And I talk about all the testing that this entails on other videos on this channel. If you just search Dr. Barry Thyroid on YouTube, you should find it. You also need a GGT, a hepatitis panel as well. Sometimes people with chronic hepatitis that's never been diagnosed, the way they're diagnosed is they go to the doctor complaining of burning in their feet and toes and legs, and that's how the hepatitis is discovered. You need a VDRL test, which is a test for syphilis. Syphilis is the great imitator. It can present with virtually any symptom whatsoever, peripheral neuropathy being one of those. You need a heavy metal testing done, and there's usually two panels of, a he of a heavy metal testing. So ask your healthcare provider for both heavy metal panels so that you catch any uh, toxicities you may have. And then outside of the lab, we can you can uh, succumb to electrodiagnostic studies and even nerve biopsies and skin biopsies looking at the small nerve fibers in those biopsies. You probably won't make it all the way down the list. You'll probably find the reason for your peripheral neuropathy up very high on this list. But if your doctor just can't find the cause, then you may keep going down this list until you've hit the grand slam of having all these tests done. So after all that, what does actually work? What does actually help peripheral neuropathy? And there are multiple studies that show this. I've got links to all the research that I used in the creation of this video down in the show notes below. I don't want you to ever blindly believe me or anyone else. I want you to check it out for yourself. So here are the things that absolutely do help the most. And I'm gonna start with the least likely to help, and then I'm gonna talk about the things that are gonna help 80 or 90% of the people with peripheral neuropathy. So making sure that either in your diet or in a supplement, you're getting an excellent source of all the B vitamins, absolutely vital, okay? You've gotta have that for proper nerve function. Making sure that you're getting enough magnesium and potassium, either in your diet or a supplement or both, is vital. Making sure you're getting enough vitamin D. And if you're gonna take a vitamin D supplement, you wanna use vitamin D3, not vitamin D2. And then making sure you're getting plenty of omega-3 fatty acids, preferably in your diet, but if you must take an omega-3 fatty acid capsule, that's your choice. But I've actually, I have actually have videos on this channel about good diet sources of all of these things that you can watch, because I'd much rather you eat real food and get your omega-3s and your vitamin D and your potassium and magnesium than I would you just take a supplement and ignore your diet. Now, let's talk about the two things that are absolutely gonna slow down, reverse, or completely cure peripheral neuropathy in the majority of people. Now, there will be exceptions if you have one of the weird causes, right, that I talked about earlier. But for 80 or 90% of the people, you're having hyperglycemia, having chronic inappropriate inflammation, and having a confused immune system. Those are the three major causes of at least the majority of your peripheral neuropathy pain. And so diet, you absolutely need to, to slowly or quickly, depending on how severe your symptoms are, transform your diet from whatever you're eating now to a very low carbohydrate diet. You need to get all the sugar, both added and natural, out of your diet because that spikes your blood sugar. You need to get all the grains out of your diet, wheat, rice, oats, corn, and all the rest of the grains because they break down immediately into sugar which spikes your blood sugar. Remember hyperglycemia? You, you And so if you're eating low carb, that's fine with me. If you're eating a keto diet, that's gonna work too. If you're eating a carnivore diet, that's gonna work too. So your diet, is that's really the most important thing you can change to help lessen your symptoms of peripheral neuropathy. And then fasting. If you have moderate to severe uh, peripheral neuropathy symptoms, you absolutely, as quick as you can, you need to ramp up your daily fasting from just the eight hours that you fast while you're asleep. You need to quickly ramp that up to a 14 to a 20 hour a day fast. When you get up to 14 hours a day and you do that for a while, you're going to start to notice an improvement. The, the, the higher up you're able to ramp it, 16, 18, or 20 hours, you're going to notice improvement quicker. Now, keep in mind, 
nerves grow very slowly. Nerves regrow very slowly. So if hyperglycemia has caused glycation and then caused your phagocytes to come in and destroy a tiny nerve ending in your toe or your foot and you're having peripheral neuropathy pain there, going low carb keto carnivore is not gonna fix that overnight. It's gonna take weeks or months for that nerve to regrow and find its other end that it lost because it was interrupted. So don't expect overnight results. That's not how the human body works when it comes to nerve physiology. Nerves regrow very, very slowly. It may take several months, but if you suffer from severe peripheral neuropathy, I don't have to tell you that if anything makes it better, it's worth waiting a while to get that improvement. I've actually ha had contact with patients in the past who have committed suicide because their peripheral neuropathy was so severe and so disabling. I try to post at least three new videos on this channel every week, so please consider clicking the su subscribe button and the little bell button right beside it so that every time I post a new one, you'll be one of the very first people to know. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.